that, I guess just start off with, I don't know, your position, what do you do? Hi, my name is Andrew Walls. I'm the CEO of Growing Green. Uh, I'm a fourth year entrepreneurship student uh, and I have experience ideating and growing new organizations. Uh, they're typically of a pro-social nature. I like to try to tackle the larger issues that societies face. Um, academically, my, my experiences go into uh, lean principles design thinking as well as strategic organization work. Um, and these inclinations and have led me to uh, found Grow on Green with the intention of tackling the problem of food security. So hi, my name is Chris. I'm a third year marketing student here at Ted Rogers. Um, I joined Growing Green because I had a previous project where I did hydroponics as well and because I, that didn't work out I wanted to join a new team and bring the idea into reality. Hi, my name is Josh Folk. I'm a fourth year uh, undergraduate student at Ryerson studying entrepreneurship and strategy. I uh, also run a consulting firm doing organizational transformation and talent development. So I thought it was a great opportunity to work with Growing Green to try and build their organization and see if we can uh, get the right talent in the right place and I'm interested about this company because I know that the people who are running this are capable of doing great things and they're working in a cool problem space so I joined on. So I'm Jacob and I'm a third year biology student from Ryerson University. I am joined Growing Green because I've been interested in hydroponics for about a year now and I decided to finally do something about it. Coincidentally at the same time Andrew also had somewhat the same idea and we decided to work together. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm a fourth year entrepreneurship student and I joined Growing Green in early September and now I'm a part of the customer development team. So the problem at Growing Green that we've identified is that uh, big agriculture has dominated the food industry for, for decades. Uh, production over process philosophies have been driving abusive environmental practices and a dependence on uh, big chemical. This combined with grocery stores as a distribution channel have alienated urban f dwellers from their food. People aren't connected anymore. It's why you're also seeing rises in uh, obesity and other food uh, epidemics because people don't understand the origin of their food and it's not necessarily the healthiest thing for them. It's why they're accepting of like fast food and other, other things like that. Uh, and as ownership of agriculture and the patent rights to bioengineered food becomes increasingly conglomerized in these large companies, they're even more inclined to not having the consumer of the foods uh, best interest at heart. So we, we believe a shift of food production into urban environments will spread ownership to the individual and mitigate many of the, and many of the environmental and other damages caused by this industrialized agricultural system. We believe this shift will only happen if the return on investment, if it's cheaper to grow food in cities than it is in, uh, in rural environments. The time commitment also has to be minimized, which is why we're, we're thinking we're going to uh, design a, a relatively autonomous hydroponic system people can use in their houses, which they can access and use for less than the equivalent cost of food in the grocery store. Growing Green is going to tackle this market in a three-stage process by iteratively tackling more ambitious markets. The first market is going to be the low-volume, high-cost market. For, for example, spices, marijuana, stuff where it's much cheaper to grow it on your own because it just costs so much to, to buy it from an industrial system. So if someone can grow significantly more on their own than by buying it from that system, they're inclined financially to, to go the system like this. So it makes it an easier uh, an easier value prop. The second market is the niche. Uh, so it's going to be people who are willing to pay a higher price for food that they know the origin of and that they've kind of grown themselves versus what you can find in a grocery store where there's sort of an uncertain origin to it. You're not sure if there are good labor practices behind it or what the chemical use is in the background of it. And the final is going to be the mass market. That's the largest consumer market. The idea being that the average person can use our system to grow food for even less than what it would cost in a grocery store. So it makes financial sense to grow your own food instead. And at that point, you'll see the mass market adoption that we've hoped for. But with Growing Green, we're competing with, we think, several different solutions to the, uh, the problem we've established. So the first one is going to be the status quo, or people's relative indifference about solving this food security problem. If we place food production into the individual's hands, they do have to take action. So if, they don't, if they're indifferent about solving the problem, they may not like, take the initiative to solve it. So that's why, by having the positive ROI uh, buying decision, it'll be really easy and convincing for people to, to, to take this solution into their lives. Uh, next is big agriculture. Um, it's a US $3 trillion industry worldwide. They already have established channels of distribution, of labor, of everything. If we disrupt the market as we hope to, um, they're going to have some say in that because people who otherwise would be buying food from, from them would instead be growing their own food and buying our systems. And then third is other people who are designing similar systems. So other hydroponics, aeroponics, aquaponics companies. So our success of beating them is predicated upon us designing a system which meets the criteria of relative autonomy. So it's not going to be fully autonomous. There is going to be at some point something people have to do. 
But if it's relatively autonomous, if they mostly just have to put the seed pods into it and then harvest the, the food once it's ready, people will be more inclined to, to use this system because the opportunity or time cost is low. As well, cost, it has to be the same or cheaper in, for a mass market adoption as uh, the equivalent food in the grocery store. Uh, reliability, most of the plants people grow, like 95 plus percent, should be successfully done. Uh, like grown to maturity and they should have a good amount of produce from them. The last is integratability, or how easily it can be integrated into people's lives. Like if, they're, if they have different living spaces, if they have different areas where they want to put these systems, it has to fit into those relatively completely. Or else if it's really hard to, we'll have a much smaller market and we won't get the adoption we want. And finally, we have uh, the range of plants you can grow. We, we need to be able to cover pretty much most of the kinds of plants people want. Like if we can get most vegetables and, and most fruits, people are more likely to use this as a sort of one, a total system solution. Whereas if we only have some of the foods you can find in a grocery store, they're still going to want to go there to get that greater range of food, which won't, again, be the solution we're looking for. So when we gather data, we go and talk to customers. We collect all a bunch of information on what they're looking for, what they want, their problems, things like that. And then we develop insights from those results. And then from there, we create a POV statement on testing hypotheses and where we go from there. And then we brainstorm solutions, exactly what they need, what it looks like, what it does. And then we go out with our prototype and we test assumptions. And then from there, we do it all over again and we reiterate until we find the perfect problem solution fit. So we've gone through this full process one time with our first prototype. And now we're going through it again with our second iteration. Right now we're gathering data by talking to customers and sitting them down with our prototype and making sure that they understand how it works. We're asking them open-ended questions, which will then validate us, give us a POV statement. And then from there, we'll see whether or not they're willing to put down the money for the product before it's even ready. And if it is, then we know we have a minimal viable product. So I'll be doing the market research for Growing Green as the chief marketing officer. So there's four main things that we're going to be doing. I'll be breaking them down into two groups. The first two is going out there and finding out what the competition is. So this would involve um, going to conferences and different exhibitions to try and understand the market uh, in the macro sense. Actually getting to speak to some of these individuals, you know, people that are owning companies, that have worked for companies, uh, enthusiasts, and trying to understand uh, who they are and what they like and what they don't like about hydroponics. The second thing that we'll be doing is conducting surveys and interviews with individuals that are in the current community that are really interested in hydroponics, those that aren't interested in hydroponics, and try and get a sense of what they think and how they see the problems are. And if they think that hydroponics would actually solve this, if they would be interested in such a unit, and all sorts of different questions like that, trying to get a real good understanding of our consumer. So the current model of the hydroponics system we've created is um, a pump from a large reservoir approximately the size of a nightstand pumps water up and into a large tube mounted on the wall. What's going to happen is water is going to run past the roots and fill up so that the plants get the nutrients they need and then it's going to flow back down back into the reservoir for eventual reuse. The reason why we kept it along the wall is to keep maximum space efficiency. Most downtown urban environments, people don't have that much space in their homes and it's gonna fit quite nicely. As part of the model of modularity, we're trying to make it so you can have a variety of setups possible. For example, you could have two going along horizontally or one vertical and two horizontal. The only limitation is the size of the pump that's being used. The current model that we have priced uh, gives you approximately 10 feet vertically. In this model, simplicity is key in which the pump is going to be on a timer which saw the bulk of the work to be planting seedlings, harvesting them later, with minimal monitoring of water level and nutrients in between. Okay, so this uh, business model canvas here is sort of an overview of Growing Green. It, it encompasses all the activities and inputs we have within the company, as well as everything we externalize, what we rely on from the outside in order to execute on the, uh, the model we've devised. So it all starts with the customer segments, or the people we are working for. So we've identified that building owners, homeowners, renters or leasers, and the government are the people who are relevant to stakeholders or are relevant to growing food. Next, we have the value proposition or what we offer them. That's going to be healthier food for less than or equal to that of grocery stores. The fact that you can know the origin of your food, that there's minimal time invested in the growing of your food because the cost of going to a grocery store and buying the food must be considered relevant to, um, to growing yourself. And finally, that you can plant and eat your own food with none of the work or expense of the current methods. Uh, so that's more like current competition that exists today. So the channels we're going to reach these people by, these uh, customer segments, is through word of mouth, free media coverage, which will arise from the novelty of what we're working on, 
as well as ads or social campaigns. Once we have these customers, we're going to maintain relationships with them based off these criteria here. The fact that our system's not frustrating to use, it's reliable, it's easy, that it integrates well into their lives. This is also into their homes, that it's, from a design perspective, uh, it can fit in a variety of homes regardless of the shape or size of the space. Further that, aesthetically it looks good, that it's, it's sort of beautiful. It's got that sort of Apple clean design where people want to talk about it. They want to share it with their friends. They want other people to know about this growing system that they have, about how much money they're saving on food. That'll create that word of mouth effect, that, that sort of viral coefficient which will make people and will make our company grow. From these customers we have, we'll have three sources of revenue. Direct sales, people will just buy our systems, simple. I uh, will license out the IP we have, so as we develop intellectual property, as we develop these systems, people are going to be interested in using some of the insights we've garnered to grow their own systems. And in the interest of food security in the long term, having more people involved in this space is good, we want that. And finally, the model that we ideal, ideally want is leasing or subscribing to our seed and system packages. This is where start to finish we help install as well as deliver both the seeds and the systems so that people for just one fixed monthly cost can get these uh, growing systems for less than what it would cost them to buy the equivalent amount of produce in the grocery store. So the key activities we're going to use, um, sort of how we'll structure our time, is going to be in pursuit of these three things. Optimizing the ROI of urban food, that is again that pursuit of making it cheaper to grow food in cities than it is in a rural environment. The more we make that a positive ROI for urban food, the more we're going to see a mass market adoption. Next is reducing the total energy equation. This takes into account carbon emissions, any environmental factors, the time cost, everything. We want the energy equation of urban food to also be lower than that of rural food. Once we have these two variables being in, in favor of urban food, we're going to see a much larger push because it makes sense in so many different ways to do it. And finally, growing our subscriber base. We can only have that impact if the mass market has adopted our systems. So the more people we have using these systems, the more likely we are to see a sort of societal change and shift towards growing food in a more sustainable, integrated way that connects people with the sources of it. The key resources we need to execute on these key activities are going to be IP, or developing intellectual property, which meets these design needs. Expertise in food production, whether that's coming from our CTO or from experts outside. We're going to need people who know food and who can integrate these systems to beyond just designing but executing the business model. And finally, the uh, brand name and assets. As we develop recognition for this, because we have also the first mover advantage executing on this vision, we're going to get a certain amount of publicity, and uh, we can use that in order to further our mission, which is to increase food security. So our key partners in executing on this model are our financing partners, because we're doing the licensing or subscription model. We're going to have a lot of people who have the system but haven't paid the full price of it. So the money for that's going to need to come from somewhere. And if direct sales don't match it, we're going to need financing to finance these things. Uh, so a good partner for that is essential. Delivery services, naturally we're going to be having at least a monthly delivery going to anyone on the leasing models uh, to their house. So we're going to have to have a good partnership with a FedEx or some sort of local delivery service on wherever the area they are. In, in this point, Toronto, so it might be Canada Post, who is going to be doing those ongoing uh, deliveries both to them and from them to us when they're sending stuff back. And then finally, seed manufacturers. At this point, we don't plan on manufacturing the seed pods ourselves. We're just going to do the, uh, the growing systems. So in that regard, we need to have someone who can manufacture them. So it could be us if need be, it's just at this point not something we're planning on doing. Uh, and then the cost structure of all this, when we're executing on these activities and to gather these resources, the costs are going to be the production of the system and the seeds, the design, the manufacturing, planning everything, executing on the back end. All that's going to be uh, incorporated into that cost. And then ownership of the lease system. So as we manufacture these systems with the external financing, we're going to have quite a bit of capital tied up in those. And for that reason, one of our big costs is going to be the cost of capital for the ownership of these things. So as you can see, all these boxes sort of tie together and give you just an overview of Growing Green and what we're trying to accomplish and how we're going to execute on the overall mission of increasing food security by shifting production to urban environments through having designed systems which work in people's homes.